All right, everybody. So in this video, we are diving into how to set up a Unicore GNSS module to monitor the satellite constellation and send correction data to a NTRIP caster using the software that is provided by the manufacturer of the module. You can follow a very similar procedure for the other modules provided by Unicore, but for a base station, as I have pointed out in my introductory video to this playlist, the UM980 really is the best choice. All right, let's get started by downloading the software from the manufacturer. Uh, you may have to create an account and sign in. I'm already signed in here. And then the easiest way to find the software is to go into the download center and simply under the search, search for U Precise, which is the name of the software. And then right here where it says U Precise version 2.0 it says pdf but you can ignore that this is the file to install the software on your computer so install the software version 2.0 has a small bug which we will be seeing here in a minute so hopefully you will have a newer version here and then you can simply open you precise and hopefully you will see a screen that looks similar to that and then you can start setting the module up which can be a little bit tricky especially if you don't know what to expect Personally, I actually ran into a little bit of a problem because the pigtail here was defective and I didn't really know what to expect. And so I wasted the better part of a day trying to figure things out. So hopefully this video will allow you not to run into the same problems. All right then. So after connecting the antenna, you can plug in the module into the computer. You should see those two lights here light up dimly and then go out again. And then after some time, once you actually have received satellites, one of those LEDs will start blinking, indicating that you now have a good satellite lock. So here we go. Okay, and then it is time to actually connect the module to you precise by selecting the correct COM port here. So you can either look in your device manager, which COM port your device has connected to, or you can just look into your options here before and after plugging in your device. In my case here, this is COM port 4, and then I can say connect, and you should then see that your module has been identified here. But nothing else will happen, and this is quite normal, but we then can actually start communicating with our module by using the, the data stream window here within the software. So for example, if we start version here, then you should see there is a response and it tells you a little bit about your model, about the firmware and the build of your module. And you also can request your current location by typing GNGGA, which gives you a NEMA sentence containing the time and the position. So let's press. The bug which uh, the software currently have, and it just tells you that it currently cannot use the Google API, and hence there will be no map showing up here. But if we press OK, you can see at least your location. So hopefully, soon enough they will update the you precise and give you a version where where the Google Map API works again. You also can click the up arrow to get back to your command here and resend it. So you will see uh, we have our location again, you can clean it, uh, you can clear the display here and do it again. Or you can request the current position automatically every second by simply specifying the time in seconds, how often you want to get an update here. So if I click OK now here, you will see that now it just, just keeps scrolling. And then you can use the save config command to actually save the, the current setting to the non-volatile memory. So if you now perform a reset here, so let's do a hot reset or unplug your module, it will go automatically back to, to those settings here. And then if you also wanna see the actual satellite constellation here, there's another command you have to activate. This is the GNGSV command, which you also probably wanna see once a second. And then now you can see uh, the constellation of the satellites which are visible right now for me you have you have the chinese satellites you have the gps you have the russians the europeans the japanese if you are in a location where you can see them and the indians and uh i'm quite sure who, who that is but typically i don't see 
any satellites of those constellations. And then again, we can save config to make those settings permanent. And then of course, if you're interested in all the various commands, which are available to you, you can go into the user reference for the commands. And as you can see, there is quite a bit you, you can discover. A link to the document will be in the description. All right, so if you're then satisfied that you have a good view of the satellite constellation, we are now ready to actually set up an NTRIP caster by sending out RTCM correction data. And for that, you probably want to reset your device to the factory settings, because if you leave the NEMA sentences on here, those will be streamed to the entry broadcaster and uh, unnecessary clutter your data stream because those sentences will not be used by the entry caster. So F, reset, always gets your device back to the factory reset and you kind of can start over with a clean slate. So the first command you probably want to set is actually a configuration for your module. And this would be config signal group 2, which will enable the L1, L2, and L5 bands, as well as the E band for the European satellites. This is the setting which enables the most bands to be analyzed by your module. It's important to note that this config signal group command actually will reset your device. So any changes you made to your this device which you have not saved with save config first will will get lost so it's probably best to to use this command first if you you're using the um982 module then this command actually has a little bit of a different signature if i go back to showing the command reference here and i search for signal group then you can see here the various settings and for the dual antenna module, you actually have to provide two numbers. And here are the possible combinations of those various uh, satellite settings. And then obviously, if you have the 980, then you have only a single antenna, and then you only select a single number here. And in our case, we selected the two, which gets us all those satellite configurations. All right, uh, after that, we can set our module as a base by mode base, and we can tell him to acquire data for 60 seconds before determining precisely the location of our base station. So again, if you, everything goes all right, you should get the response OK command here. And then again, we can use our DNGSV every one second to get back our configurations here. And actually, if you go online, you can see here the GGA command the format of the NEMA sentences, you get back the current time, the latitude and the longitude and some data concerning the signal quality of your satellite system. And then again, if you are streaming your data, you can actually stop the stream by using UN log, which disables the streaming of the NEMA sentences here. And then we can start setting our RTCM commands here, which will ultimately be binary data streams. So they won't show up here, but they RTCM 1005 provides the location of our base station to the entry caster. And we can maybe do that every 30 seconds because this is information which hopefully will not change very much. You should get the OK response here. But again, you will not see any data here. Then the RTCM 1033 provides information regarding the receiver and the antenna you have to the entry caster. And now here actually come the satellite correction data streams, the RTCM 1077. And we want to send those every second, which is the correction data for the GPS system. Say, OK, here. Similarly, the 108 is the Russian satellite system. We also want to send those every second. The 7 back here is the, the quality, and the 7 is the highest quality. UM980 receiver is capable of, so why not use it? Then 10.9 is the European satellite system. You want to enable that one. The 11 here indicates the Japanese satellite system, which I don't have, so I won't even bother to enable it. And lastly here, the number 12 indicates the Chinese satellite system. And that's definitely is a good one because this is actually the constellation with the most satellites in it. So we want to enable this one here as well. So now that your module is configured, you want to probably do a save. Config to save all those settings. 
make sure that the response is okay. And now our model is configured a RTK base station. Okay, so now that the module is configured, we can start streaming our data to an Entrip caster. And a popular choice here is the RTK to go, which is a free Entrip caster. You will have to create an account with them, which is pretty straightforward. I will not go into any details here. But one thing you have to be careful about is not to send erroneous data to the Entrip caster because your IP will get blocked for a certain amount of time if you send useless or wrong data. So it has happened to me a couple of times and you just have to wait until your IP is unblocked. Okay, so to stream your data to RTK to go, you go into the RTCM setting here under this little briefcase, and then you need to configure your input, which you need to get data from your COM port. It needs to be the same COM port where your module is connected to, which in my case is four. And the output you can configure to RTK to go. So that's actually here is the IP address of RTK to go and the port. And then you need to provide the name of the base station you have provided when you created your RTK to go account and also a password and you say OK and then you can say connect. You will start seeing your stream here and thus, since it is hexadecimal data uh, it doesn't make much sense here but you can click on here and you can see now your RTCM correction data being streamed to your RTK to go entry caster so we can close that and then we can go to this website here again a link will be in the description and we can say rtk to go.com and our port 21 submit and typically this will work but for some reason today it doesn't so let me just show you with a different uh, entry caster here what you should be able to see let's go to clients dot com, and in this case this one actually works we can say view all and then depending on how many base stations are online this map will be building up here and then you should be able to zoom in on to your location and you should be able to see that your base station is up and running again a link to the website will be in the description or alternatively you can go to uh, rtk to go right here and then if you search for your base station mine is called rtk base gn1 you should see that your base station is up and running here if you click on it you should get again more information about your base station what kind of data you send and if you have the 1005 stream enabled then you also should be able to see your station here on google google maps right here so that means everything is working properly and people within a 10 mile radius should be able to use this data to correct their own satellite navigation data to get precise positioning within a couple of centimeters just real quick here if you look at the data input at the data output if you have too many NEMA sentences enabled which will not be used by the entry caster then you will see a discrepancy here between the data in and the data used so make sure to kind of not send too much useless data here because you might actually get blocked from rtk to go if you do so all right so the next video will be about how we can use this data from the rtk to go entry caster or any other caster for this matter in you precise to actually configure a rover and get those very precise location data we are after. All right, so if this video was of interest to you, give it a like and maybe even subscribe, and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.